What's up, craft beer aficionados? Flying Brian J here. We're gonna talk about Emoticon Dry Hop Sour by Crabtree Brewing Company out of Greeley, Colorado. Now, I don't know if I'm going to do this going forward, but I didn't want to look at Beer Advocate, Rate Beer, Untapped at the ratings there prior to doing the video because I'm worried that those numbers would skew my own perception of the beer. So I'll put them on the screen now for you to see them and I will only be able to see those ratings when I go to put them here. On their website, they don't list the IBU, but since it's a sour beer, I'm assuming it has none to very minimal bitterness units because they're really going for that sour taste to dominate the palate. It has 4.5% alcohol by volume. Let's get a look at the bottle, pop the top on it, get a nose on her, and go through with this review. So the bottle is simple yet kind of cool. I think it's funny that they use the plain gold cap because those are the kind of caps that you can get from like Midwest Supplies or even Amazon.com for your homebrew. But anyway, I like that it has an emoji because it's emoticon. Artwork is simple, but I really kind of like it. Let's read what the bottle says. An American red ale and a sour blonde ale collide on tropical and citrus aromas birthed from Cascade, Horizon, and Zeus hops. This tangerine beauty finishes with a mellow grapefruit and citrus note from the hops, allowing for the best of both tart and hoppy. Let's pop her open and get a pour. It's a lot darker than I thought it was going to be. It's clear and it has a slight red tint to it. The minimal head that I poured it with faded quickly. Lots of carbonation coming up from the bottom, so let's get a sniffer on it before all that aroma dissipates. It's super weird smelling. Of course you can smell the sour coming through, citrus in there. I swear for a second I smelled some cinnamon. Perhaps I'm not doing well up in the brain. I mean, that's, that's true as well. It's mutually exclusive, but... All right, all right, the cinnamon's probably not there. I thought it for a second. Uh, citrus and sour dominate the smell. There is some caramel malt, some of that malty sweetness coming through in the smell, but let's see if we can taste it. Cheers. Ooh. That is weird. That's one of the strangest beers I've ever had. It's kind of neat. There's areas that I like, there's areas that I don't like. It's, it's thin to medium in the mouth feel. Obviously no bitterness hanging out because you know there's no IBUs listed and I already said it's a sour beer so that's probably not happening too much. Kind of sweetness happening. Kind of uh, the flavor gets to all areas of my mouth which is neat. The sour is definitely there. The Irish red or the red ale of it is definitely there. It's all, hmm, or the amber ale, whatever. It is kind of goofy. The thought that came to my head straight away was, you know Bob Ross, the joy of painting and chilling with Bob Ross, right? It's like if that dude, when he finished the painting, just like ran his hands across it and like made it all weird looking. Yes, that would still be art, but wouldn't you be a little confused? I would. And that to me is what's going on with this beer. Yeah, it's artsy. They were trying for something weird and out there and they definitely got it. This is a Pablo Picasso, this is abstract kind of shit. You know what I'm talking about? But I'm not sure how much I'm enjoying it. It's like this beer doesn't know what it wants to be. The sour is enjoyable and it's there. And yes, it is pleasant, definitely distinct. And then the caramel malt and the malty sweetness is there and it's distinct and palatable and kind of enjoyable. I'm back and forth on this. I'm con a little confused to be straight honest with you. This is a goofy, goofy beer. Love the sweetness, love the clarity, love the carbonation coming up from the bottom. I'm just not sure if I like the mixture. You know, perhaps down the road, this is a style that I could get into, but I love me some sour beers. No matter what grade I give this beer right here, I like Crabtree Brewing. I love their Berliner Weiss. One of the first bottled Berliner Weisses that I was ever, or Berliner Weiss, however you pronounce that, was one of the first I was able to get my hands on in bottles ever. So I like this company, love that beer. I'm excited to try more of their beers. So no matter what grade I give this one, don't let it deter you from buying the rest of their brand because this is just an anomaly. I get they're trying to go for some Pablo Picasso 
abstract, weird, artsy, fartsy kind of goofiness with this thing. The two styles stand alone, love it. The two distinct flavors, I love it. I just don't know if I like it together. It's like putting barbecue sauce on your peanut butter and jelly. Love them separate. Don't know if we should mix them really. You know what I'm saying? Uh, in the end, yeah, it's weird because it's hitting two different pieces of my mouth. Top, bottom with the two different flavors. I feel like I'm getting more sour on the top, more of the sweetness down low. I don't know if that's the truth or if I'm just making shit up. That's what I feel in the moment. I'm going to give the beer a 3.75. You know, originally I was going to give it a 3 or a 3.25 because I just wasn't loving how they intermingled together. Maybe the last time I had one of these beers, I was drinking it after another beer or after I ate something, but... I'm liking it a lot more now than I did before. So perhaps if I try it again, I'll give it a 4.25. But for now, guys, I'm going, to give it, I'm going to give it a 3.75, which is pretty decent. You know, I really want to stick with that this is a beer that just doesn't know who it is. This beer's a teenager, you know, growing up and there's all these people around it trying to influence who they are in life. Like, oh, you should play football. Hey, man, let's go smoke weed at the park. You know, really doesn't know which way to go and uh, maybe Later on, it will really understand, but for right now, the beer gets a 3.75. Have you ever had a Moticon by Crabtree Brewing out of Greeley, Colorado? If so, let's talk about it in the comment section down below. And if not, don't let my review of it deter you from buying it because it's an experience. You know, it's, it's a beer that I think you need to taste at least once because it is so goofy. Anyway, please give the video a thumbs up, share it on all of your favorite social media websites. I really appreciate uh, you guys for hanging out and being with me and supporting this channel. It means the world to me. I'll see you on my next video. Cheers. One thing too that I didn't hit on during the meat of the video, I know I always do these you know, after video little deals, I just like doing it. Um, since it is 4.5% alcohol by volume, it is real sessionable. And I've been looking for a lot of sessionable beers lately because, you know, there was a portion of my life where I was loving those 10%, loving those 9%. And then, you know, if just like one Friday or Saturday, you get a little carried away with those 9 to 10% and you end up like sleeping through the entire next day. Or, or something like that, you know what I'm saying. Anyway, I'm looking for some more sessionable beers, and this is 4.5. It is drinkable, it is real smooth, mouth feels decent. It's overall pretty enjoyable, but it's just so fucking goofy that I don't know exactly if I like it or not. Sessionable, sure. Clear, clarity, yep. Uh, enjoyable in most areas, absolutely. It's just... It's like a platypus, you know, like a beaver with a bill on it, a duck bill. What the fuck is that? This beer's a platypus. It's strange. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Thumbs up. I appreciate you. Namaste.